we want to find the exact components of the vector using the angle as shown below. But notice in this example, no angle is shown. We're given this vector here and told the magnitude is 22. But it'll be helpful if we assume the initial point is at the origin on the coordinate plane. So let's sketch the axes. This would be the x-axis and this would be the y-axis. So if we now assume the initial point is at the origin, the point zero comma zero, if this vector has a magnitude of 22, it has a length of 22, and therefore the terminal point, this point here, lying on the y-axis would have to have the coordinates zero comma 22. This is all we need to find the component form of vector C. Vector C in component form would have an x component of zero, and a y component of 22. Let's also take a look at this definition here below. If vector v has a known magnitude and makes an angle theta with the positive x-axis, then the x component of vector v would be the magnitude times cosine theta, and the y component would be the magnitude times sine theta. So let's find the components of vector c using this definition as well. We'll say vector c would be equal to the magnitude of vector c times the unit vector cosine theta comma sine theta. Notice how if we perform the scalar multiplication, this is equivalent to this definition here. Now let's find angle theta, an angle formed between the vector and the positive x-axis. So if this is the initial side and the vector is a terminal side, Probably the most obvious angle for theta would be this angle here of 90 degrees. Of course, any coterminal angle would work, but this is the least positive angle that we can use. So we'd have vector C is equal to the magnitude, which we're given is 22, times a unit vector where if theta is 90 degrees, we'd have cosine 90 degrees comma sine 90 degrees. And now there are several ways to find these trig function values. If we take a look at the unit circle, remember x is equal to cosine theta and y is equal to sine theta. And notice 90 degrees terminates here and therefore cosine 90 degrees is equal to zero and sine 90 degrees is equal to one. We should also be familiar with the graphs of cosine and sine shown here. Notice cosine of 90 degrees, or cosine pi over two, would be here with a function value of zero. And then sine pi over two, or sine 90 degrees, would be here, giving us a function value of one. So whichever way we approach this, cosine 90 degrees is equal to zero, sine 90 degrees is equal to one. So this would give us vector C equals 22 times the unit vector, with an x component of zero and a y component of one. Performing the scalar multiplication gives us the same result. Vector C has an x component of zero and a y component of 22. I hope you found this helpful.